few days ago, the MPP held a press briefing and extended um, some sort of an olive branch or calling on all the other political parties to look at this from a certain nationalistic point of view. That's right. But the NDC has released a statement and indicated that this is due to the failure of the president and this president must, must, must speak up on the matter. The NDC still believes that the president has not been decisive on this issue of quelling the threat of secession in, in, in the voter region. What's your take on the matter? Thank you very much, Duke. Let me say good morning to your good self and my colleague and them. Let me also say good morning to the people of Ghana watching us. I am happy I was present at a press conference by the leadership of my party. It was addressed by Mr. John Boydou. In that press conference, John Boydou, the general secretary of our party, sought to nationalize the issue, which I think is the appropriate way to go. Mm -hmm. And he called on all political parties to, as a matter of agency, come together with the NPP for us to take a nationalistic posture to condemn this particular activity. I haven't had the benefit of listening fully to what my brother said, but the concluding bit of it, I would want to take it from there. Duke, we are certain on a matter that threatens the very peace and security of our nation. The few times I get the opportunity to comment on this particular matter, what I ask myself is, what are the people looking for? And I have tried the best I can to stay away from the historical antecedent of this particular matter because it is flawed from the historical perspective. There That's are new perspectives coming up. People say even going to the point of making the argument that the legal Ghana as a legal entity does not even exist because it was not ratified that's, by the UN resolution. That's, so that's, sometimes that's a you can't flawed, make the historical argument. That's a the flawed issue. argument. I mean, as long as there was a referendum, there was a place beside, and then all these cases were lost, and then the Western Togoland could not succeed way from 1956, you can't resurrect history and alter its components. Okay. So let's speak to specifics. When you go to Nigeria in Bono State, in the city of Meidugri, where Boko Haram resides, and where their leader, Muhammad Yusuf, started the movement, the movement Boko Haram has destroyed properties and lives in Meidugri, in Bono State, more than they have done in any part of Nigeria. The records are there. So, this brings me to the point where I salute the voter regional chiefs, the leadership of the people of voter region. I salute the position they have taken, condemning the act of the men and women, the secessionists. Some have named them terrorists. I am excited waking up this morning and, of course, even yesterday listening to the president making a bold and decisive statement. Listen, the matter over there is not something we need to politicize. But, but uh, the others are, uh, the, there's a, the point has been made that it looks like the activities of these groups are ahead of our national security. Now listen, Duke. Two in, successive attacks in a matter of days. Duke, in 1995, when Timothy McVeigh put a bomb on him, and blasted Oklahoma City and 168 people died. It took close to 10 years before another awful incident did strike the America, 9-11. Yeah. The point I'm trying to establish is that your fear and that of other well-meaning Ghanaians, which they have expressed, we do not have to sweep them under the carpet and assume that all is well. Incrementally, the activities of these men and women keep rising. That is what I'm talking about, the example I cited in America. All-knowing, sophisticated America could not preempt 9-11 attack. From Oklahoma bombing days in 1995, the next one was 9-11, 10 years beyond. Hi there, we hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe. Like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.